Thank you very much for your kind introduction. First of all, I'd like to talk, uh, thank the organizers, in, including the Big Nesh and the Professor Guy Hoffman, to invite me to this attractive workshop. This is Hiras, Hiras Iwata speaking from Wazir University. Prior to my talk, let me introduce myself. Actually, I'm a member of Wazir Robotics Group. Actually, Wazir Robotics has a 50 year history of research and development in robotics starting from a development of our first human-like life-working robot in 1973, we have launched in 2015 Future Robotics Organization in Washington University. So far, we have developing a variety of robots, including life-working robot, Wabian, led by Professor Takanishi and the human symbiote robot, 21, uh, led by Professor Sugano. I was a core member of the 21 project. And also, the, the five years ago, we, we have launched the human augmentation robotics research. So today, we then talk about the voluntary manipulative third arm, which comprehensively contribute to perform some multiple tasks simultaneously. Well, do you think how useful supernumerary robotic devices are? So let me show our examples. Uh, do you have any experience that you wish you have one more arm with your body, like when you are walking on crutches while holding an umbrella in the rainy season in Japan like that? Also, we might wish the, to have an additional arm that can open a door when carrying some, something in both hands. We often encounter do these situations in our life in which we need an extra hand. So, so what's the impact of the third arm research? I, we believe that there are high impacts from the two aspects, academic impact and the social one. The primary objective of this research is on pursuing the scientific aspect to answer research question, such as how to deduce a methodology of a mechanism to get additional redeem embedded. Also, we have focused on uh, another potential in practical aspect which leads to offer helpful SR devices to people who are in trouble in daily life activities as shown in these videos. So the, let me show you the third arm we have developed in my laboratory. So please imagine the, the office you are very busy working emailing or any other creating documents. In such cases, you're very thirsty. In such cases, you're going to uh, pick up the pet bottle to drink the water while continuing, continuing the keyboard typing like that. So let me show you the system overview of the third arm, which is composed of the diagram interface and the four, four degrees of freedom robot arm and the attachment base to the shoulder and so on. Here is another case to pick up the other, other two, uh, other, uh, other one, like a telephone. And there is the, actually the, you are always uh, with a third arm like that. This is our images of the future. So actually through the development of the third arm, we have found that there are at least three technical issues which are relevant to manipulative intuitiveness of the third arm. They are hardware, interface, and artificial intelligence. With respect to hardware system, we should consider the balancing of the lightness and the robustness, robustness in handling, as well as human safety and lower inference to natural body. Experience of using third arm showed that the reaction force accompanied by the third arm motion affects two motions of natural body, especially if the third arm motion is moving with a higher range of velocity and acceleration. Regarding interface, we can widely select several uh, sensor sets among from EZ, EMZ, IMU sensors, and voice. 
but it seems difficult to identify the best one or the best combination. It depends on the complexity of a target task. Well, our experience indica indicates that the intuitiveness of uh, and the lower burden which users feel during manipulating the third arm is higher priority to take. Based on this idea, we have uh, proposed a point instruction interface using head movement, which allows a user to voluntarily designate the 3D coordinate of the reaching point without incurring a high cognitive load. This is an iGrass interface de device we made, mounting uh, the IMU sensor and distance sensor for getting coordinate. Because a face vector itself is invisible, a laser pointer is attached to the interface to give visual feedback to the users. Using this eyeglass shape interface, as shown in the previous movie, you can see the eyeglass pointing at the target and he said go, then arm reaches to that target. So we believe that the merit of the using uh, the face vector is the free choice of watching the task because it doesn't need to use central visual field. You can pay higher attention to the task you want to watch. The other one is we can use it to show the target trajectory to be followed by using the head movement. movement. We believe that the hands-free interface like this um, iGrass for controlling a robot arm can extend the possibilities of human work in various situations. In order to evaluate the usefulness of the pointing interface, we, we developed the uh, robot, robotic arm and carried out an experiment as shown here. So we assume that the, the dual task situation where the 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 the, the user is uh, manipulating the the third arm, which is separated from the the users uh, using the the eyeglass interface, and while the the users should execute another task. This is the the dual task situation where the we call the task performed by the natural arms by the user in a task. And the task by the extra arm, E task. So let me show you the example of the task. Um, we selected as a E task, a button pushing task. So you can see here, sorry. So there are four push buttons and the LED is uh, placed on the horizontal frame of the, of the desk. After the experiment start queue, one randomly chosen LED lights up to indicate the target button. Then the subject tries to push the target button with the extra arm and the, the eyeglass interfaces. So in this case, the we change is the control mode. So the actually, let me uh, the the give you the in additional information about the setting of the end task by uh, conducted by the user. There are two type of the end task. The one is end task with a low low cognitive load, like keyboard typing, where subject type sentences displayed on the computer screen and the number of keys tied per second and the number of mistakes were used to determine the end task performance. The other one is uh, in a task with a high cognitive load, uh, such as like uh, the measuring hot water, where subject for a speci specified amount of hot water into a measuring cup from an electric pot of water at 90 degrees Celsius. The amount of poured hot water uh, was measured after the task and uh, the difference from the specified amount was recorded to quantify the task and the task performance. 
And also, the, we evaluated the usability of the two types of the control ways. Uh, point, one of them is uh, the point in, in interaction type interface, which designates one or two points to be passed. Whereas the pass control type control way uh, demonstrates all the points over the trajectory to be forward. So let me show you the example of the demonstrations of the experiments. You can see here that the, the user is trying to pour the hot water while conducting the another task to instruct the third arm to push the bottom. And this is a, the pass control mode. You can see here uh, the, the using the neck motions, he is now trying to designate the, the all the, the points or all the trajectory. It's a very tough work for him while uh, carrying out the, the another task like a keyboard typing or pouring the hot water. And in this case, the, the, the the collision exists among the, the four buttons like that. In such cases, the user has to avoid the, like uh, obstacles. It's a game of the, the collision avoidance again. And also, that let me show you the result of the time taken. You can see there are no no, no different in time taken independent of any tasks, measuring hot water and keyboard typing. And also, that in the, the point instruction, a significant time reduction was seen for the dual task. However, in the pass control, the, in the dual task state, there were cases in which either no significant difference was observed here. The, the results show that the point instruction interface proposed in this study can shorten working time for reaching tasks compared to the pass control interface in all single task conditions, whether this is true or for all dual task conditions. And this shows the performance of each end task. For typing, accuracy is used, and for measuring, the average error in weight is used. For each of the end tasks, but the performance by pass control type in the dual task states is worse than the performance by point instruction type. So, the, for, for, on, on the contrary, the, for the measuring end task and single E task, when pass control was used, there is a significant difference between performance in the single and dual task scenarios. This indicates that the, the cognitive load of the proposed point instruction interface is low enough that dual tasks can be performed as well as in single task conditions. Therefore, the, the usability of the proposed point instruction interface is suggested with respect to its low cognitive load. So through the observation of operators using the third arm, we have found a key issue. It is attention allocation of a user onto a main task by natural body and subtask by the, the third arm or the extra arms. Ideally, the larger attention should be delivered to main task, whereas lower attention onto the target of the SR arms, like this figure. But uh, if a user cannot easily operate as SR arms and may must pay more attention to SR device, SR de devices, attention paid onto main task would decrease like this figure, which will cause users frustration or irritation which should be avoided.
you know, attention reallocation should be optimized depending on situations. So actually, the, uh, we confirmed that the, the, the point in instruction interface is very useful. So actually, we have implemented the, the eyeglass interface to the, the third arm. And also that you can see here, here is the, the first trial of applying the wearable robot arm and the eyeglass interface to a user. What's going on here is that human adapts the robot. It's not ideal relationship. Of course, robots should adapt. So actually, the, we analyze the reason why it's occurred. So there are two reasons. Actually, that due to accuracy limitation in object pointing by the facial vector, the, the, there are this frequency between intended and actual directions. So actually, the, uh, the, the, the for further details, it's actually we'd like to skip due to that limitation of the time. So, but actually, we have investigated the, the, the possible disc discrepancy between intended and actual directions through the experiment. So actually, we have found that two centimeter is acceptable during the, the your task conditions. And also the, the, the other one is the limitation of robot, robots grasping performance. Actually, the, due to this limitation, the robot cannot pick up the object in the, the, the previous movies. So actually, the, in order to overcome this problem, actually, we have to uh, give the, the end effector software to enable rob robust object grasping from any approaching angle. This point is very important, we believe that, because the, if the, the, the user has to the, uh, pre precisely operate the, the approaching angle to the object very accurately, it's uh, very tough work for the user, and also the, the more pay attention uh, will be the consumed for the, uh, the, the pointing the object or picking up the object using the SR devices. So actually we have tried to develop the very robust robotic hand. But actually, the, the, actually considering the application to the uh, real robot arm, we have to uh, face on the, uh, the limit, limited weight to be mounted to the, the wearable robot arm. So actually we have to limit the number of the, the weight it's set as a requirement of the robot robotic arm, like the, the, this figure. Actually we have uh, applied, adopted a one degree of freedom uh, actuator of the robotic hand and also the the three grippers, one, 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 one gripper with a three fingertip with a softness like this figure. These are the balloon type of fingers which allows us to adapt to any object even at the slides. So at, at the size you can see here. And also the, the balloon type of uh, the, the, the fingertip the, is given the, the the very special structure, like a jamming structure, which use utilize which is utilizing a jamming transition. So you can see here that, that this balloon that is the including the the very small particles inside, uh, like a coffee beans. So actually the and also that this particle is filled by the elastomer elast membrane and also that when the, the, the decompression is made the, the, due to the jamming transition, the, the, the form of the, the object is uh, memorized like this figure. So actually the, this soft balloon and the, this jamming transition Actually, this robot reaches a very higher dexterous manipulation. 
actually we have carried out uh, some experience using this developed uh, public hand the, by changing the approaching angle from 90 to uh, 30. You can see here it uh, allows us to robustly pick up the object. And also that we have given the, the a big the positioning error that you which will be caused by the the discrepancy between the actual and the targeted positions by the eyeglass interfaces. But actually that you can see here that we have reached the 90 percent success rate if the, there is a 30 millimeter positioning error, which, which leads to the very successful development of the, the robust handling like this. And applying this robotic hand and the eye grass interface combined with the, the four degrees of freedom, we can the demonstrate the kitchen task. In this case, is, uh, he is now uh, mixing uh, the, the meat with uh, both hands. In such cases, uh, you, you, he, he is going to use the dressing and salt uh, to, to increase, enhance the, the taste of the Hamburg. But actually, he, he, don't want, he, don't, he doesn't want to the, the, wash his hand. So actually, he successfully pick up the object using an eyeglass interface like this. So that, what's next? Actually, the, we developed the new concept called the, the detachable body. That you can see here, the it can the the detachable body is the, the attached and detached from the humans. And also that what you can see here is it can be detached from the user's natural body and attached onto uh, the other person's body, but also anywhere in the environment, like a wall. Humans can become to perform dual presence tasks that are concurrent tasks executed in two distance places using the detachable body, we believe. So we, we, we are now proposing uh, the dual presence uh, idea, the, which enables a concurrent task. You can see here, detachable body allows us to achieve a dual presence task, which is a concurrent task at two distance places, place A and place B. We expect concurrent tasks at two distant places will be often required in various things of our daily life. For example, when a visitor comes uh, while we are cooking, we want to continue stirring the, the pot at the kitchen while opening the door for a visitor at the entrance. However, our natural body can only physically exist in one place at a time. In addition, it is difficult to perform two or more concurrent tasks for humans with only two natural arms. So there are two challenges in development of the detachable body system for two concurrent tasks at distant places. Well, first one is to develop the system that you, the user can switch or relocate attention distribution to at their will. The second challenge of the detachable body is to develop the system that the user can manipulate their detachable, detached arm and natural arms concurrently. Concurrent manipulation has difficulties in its control method and information presentation. So actually, the, the we aim to develop the detachable body for the dual presence task, concurrent task performed in two or more distance places. For the first step, we, we assume the case that one detachable arm is at remote place from user's natural body and the users try to perform the dual presence task at current place at, and at remote task place. We then propose a new information uh, presenting interface for the detachable body uh, that users can know two environment information and two body information concurrently. And it's, uh, uh, we discuss its system in aspect of the easiness of attention distributions. 
So there are two important requirements for the information pre presenting interface. The first is to present the information of two environments and two bodies concurrently. Users have to manipulate their arms in two locations, so it is important to know how is each environment and how is each arm. During the task, they would not always pay attention at 50 and 50 percent. They may pay more attention to one side uh, at a time and switching this allo allocation depending on situation. So it is important to not interfere with these attention allocation. So based on these requirements, we designed a system of the information presenting interface for the detachable body. The interface consists of the concurrent vision presenting system for the environment in information and the concurrent proprioception presenting system for the body information. So left figure show the information presenting interface. As for the environment information, the easiest way to know it for, for most humans is to see it. So we designed a system that presents it two environment images concurrently. As I mentioned, the first requirement of this system is to provide a first person view of two environment at the same time, because the first person view provides high immersion. To satisfy the first requirement, we, we decide to use a superimposition type screen for the vision system for the interface. The second, second requirement of this system is that users can easily switch or relocate their attention distribution from among several methods to switch attention easily between two transparent images. We decided to adopt a multi-layered screen with a binocular disparity. So the, uh, here is the, the concurrent vision presenting system which is composed of two cameras and the immersive head mounted display. Our camera, the one camera is placed at the front of the head mounted display on the natural body side and the other camera is placed at the head position against the arm position on the detached body side. The camera against uh, angle is always synchronized with the angle of the head mounted display by a servo motor. In the head mounted display, transparent images from two cameras are displayed, superimposed to make this party. Okay, the, regarding the body state information, it's actually the, we have uh, implemented uh, the, the built type of the interfaces with the vibra vi 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 vibration given to the the waist and the, the back, like these figures, using a belt for the waist and the, the jacket for the, the back. So this mechanism allows the, the users of the, the 3D hand position of the, the detachable body uh, the, by using the, the position of the vibration and vibration frequency. The here is uh, the prototype of a concurrent proprioception of the detachable body to present the coordinate of the 2D hand position. So actually, we, we carried out the experiment to ver verify the impact of the disparity and the bibliotactile feedback information in concurrent tasks. We set two tasks. The main task is performed by a detachable body at the remote place, and the subtask is performed by a natural body at the current place. The main task is a continuous body, um, continuous button pushing task that subjects operate the detachable arm and push the button, which is indicated as a target. Four numbers, four numbered buttons are arranged on the desk, like this figure. And also the subtask is an inter intermittent block correcting task that the users uh, use their natural arms and correct wooden block, which color is indicated by the color maker, marker. And also we perform the main task and subtask concurrently under four conditions with 
disparity without disparity and with by people uh, feedback and without people feedback. The here is the, the videos of the experiment. You can see here the subject controls the detached detached arm using the right and left foot pedals at the at the natural body side, pushing either the left or right pedal will rotate the detached arm in the U direction, direction and pushing both pedals at the same time will lower it the pitch direction. After the start cue of the experiment, the color indicator is presented for one second at randomly, random timing on the white wall in both current and remote environment at the same time. When subject notice the indicator presenting, they judge which color is presented in current environment and push the color button, which is co co uh, consistency to it. Correct the bot blocks of the same color from the ball and move them to the tray. So here is the uh, images from the subject view. You can see here the the two, two images that in that the superimposed with each other, and you can find the, the, the SR devices, the SR arm is moving, but it's gone out of the scope like this. But actually, the heat can feel the vibration about the, the, the hand position of the arm uh, using, using the interface. Okay, so the, the result of the experiment were pretty much as expected. Current, uh, the correct answer rate of the sub task was improved when there was a disparity. And time taking the main task is shortened when there was a feedback information. Also regarding the NASA TRX score as a subjective evaluation, uh, the best rating was in the condition with disparity and with people feedback. The, these results suggest, su suggest that the disparity and the feedback have some effect to help attention switching or better attention uh, allocation in your presence task and improve task performance. However, looking at the time taken in the, the subtask, there was a result that the, the feedback decreases the work efficiency when there was no disparity conditions like this. It suggests that the feedback may require pretty much attention to understand its meaning to that it, uh, so that it should be used with disparity in this interface. So actually, the, let me move, uh, the, the, go back to the, the detachable, detachable body. And those are the, what we have done is to uh, develop the detachable, detachable body actually like that. So please imagine the kitchen task where the, uh, you are now cutting the vegetables while start stirring the stew using the SR devices. But actually you, you found that you forgot to put the, the seasoning into the soup to increase the taste, but actually it don't irritate because the third arm can be attached, detached and be placed in uh, the kitchen like this. And also that you can pick up the ketchup to keep the taste of the stew. And also that this is the, the, the practical application to the uh, industrial field. The, actually, you can see here uh, that the we are now trying to apply the third arm to construction work. You can see here. That's the problem is that the, the three three tasks are the incorporated and should be done by one operator. It's uh, beyond one operation. So actually, the, it's which, which this task requires the two people, at least three hands. And there is a bad texture that you using the third arm. You can see here that he can retain the board uh, using the third arm. And also that he is trying to take a screw, then handle screwdriver with the right hand and the while keeping the board 
retained by the third arm. And there is a he completely uh, the, this construction work. So actually, this is a future images. That in this respect, recently, Waseda has been the partnering with the Japanese company Panasonic to work on the operation of the third arm during the performing of overhead work on construction sites like this. Okay, so let me conclude my talk. Actually, we would like to uh, create uh, the super waiter using uh, uh, exploiting, exploiting the third arm like this. And there is that, uh, thank you very much for uh, the joining us the, in the national project called Elato. Uh, Professor Inami is the head of this project. And also that I'd like to thank uh, my uh, members of Iwata Laboratory. Okay, thank you very much.